one minute to spare. <laughs> okay, guys, we're back. Um, let's just get a few minutes here. So I had to go do chores, or I had to go get the cows. And came back. So those of you watching on YouTube later, <laughs> hello, hello. So, I literally, <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> I sat down and I was like, oh, it's 8.14. <laughs> so we'll give it a few minutes here, just like a little bit. Hello, hello. For everybody to catch back on who wanted to come back on with us. Whoop. Hello, Romaine. Hello, hello, guys. And we'll continue in Isaiah 43. I'm slurping. Can you hear it? <laughs> Hi guys. Okay. We're going to give it a few more minutes so we can get uh, catch up and go through um, Isaiah 43 and beyond. So I have to swirl it because there's cacao powder and turmeric powder in there. Hello, hello. So we're continuing second half of the live. <laughs> I had to take a break and go catch the cows that came down. Um, but now we're back. We gave that, and it was like funny, it was exactly 20 minutes. I like got out and I thought, oh, 815. You can't hear the slurping good because it's gross sounding. But I put so much turmeric in and so much cacao. <clears throat> okay, guys, so we're gonna give it just a few minutes for everybody to get back on. Continuing on, those first three chapters were hot, 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 weren't they? <laughs> Isaiah 40, 41, and 42 are like amazing, amazing. And we're going to continue on with Isaiah 43. So give a few minutes for people to catch back up, especially if they have to refresh their computers or their phones, just to make sure because they've probably been waiting because they knew I was going to come back on in 20. So <laughs> I'm just thankful the Father helped, helped me get it in in 20 because the cows came down the hill and then they decided to go down over to this, like by the creek. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> but I have a fat cow. She's a fat girl cow. And if she thinks there's food, she will come running. So she's my saving grace, like all the time. If I could just get her to come, everybody will follow and she'll do anything for food. <laughs> she's amazing. Okay guys, we're gonna continue on. Um, hopefully you didn't miss the first three chapters tonight. If you did, go back and watch it there great chapters, like the best chapters of Isaiah. <laughs> All of it's good, but I love those chap those particular, those three chapters of Isaiah. Yay. Okay. We're going to give it like two more minutes. We're going to give it like two more minutes just for people to catch up. Hi, hello. Sina and Alicia are back. And Micaiah, Francis, Jenny. Hello, hello. Hannah, Katie, Dina, Marie, Danielle, Jesse. Jess, Romaine, Julia, Bonnie, Crystal. All right, guys. Okay, hi, John. We're going to continue on here. Chapter. Hi, Shawnee. We're going to just one more minute, one more minute, because, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure people were watching and refreshing. Okay, one more minute. We're going to continue on. If you missed the first three chapters tonight, go back and watch that video. It's posted to the page. Um, Oh, <laughs> Jesse, so you missed the first three chapters. I posted it. The video's up there. It was so good. The first three chapters were amazing. Your phone died, Alicia. Well, I guess you got 20 minutes now to go get it, huh? Okay, guys, one more minute. We're just going to wait till 8.19. Hi, Hannah. We're going to go. If you missed the first three chapters tonight, before I had to go divide the cows for milking in the morning, um, go back and watch them. They were imperatively amazingly good. <laughs> you need to go. It's like an imperative. You need to go watch them. <laughs> and they were amazingly good. Okay. I'm going to wait till 819 just because. Almost done. Almost done. Almost done. And we're... <laughs> Everybody's off. So Jesse thought today was Monday. Jesse thought yesterday was Tuesday. Okay, guys, it's 819. Yep. Awesome. Okay. That was fast. Well, and I thought my cows had come all the way down to the barn. Oh, no. I saw them walking down the hill, and I was excited, thinking, oh, yeah, they brought them right to the barn. No. Oh, no, that would have been too easy. They went down to the creek. <laughs> but I pulled out the orange bucket and fooled Sally. And Sally was pretty sure there was food in it. And there was, but not for her, because she hasn't birthed yet. She hasn't calved yet. Um, 
because she had twins last year, so it took her a bit longer for her body to heal enough to get pregnant again. So she should be calving, I think, in May. Jilly calved in February. So the oats were for Jilly. <laughs> okay, guys, let's continue. Okay, here we are back again. 20-minute break. Let's go. Isaiah 43. Obedience is not lawlessness. She works for Satan. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, Satan is the disobedient one against God. <laughs> if you teach the Torah, you're not of Satan. That's exactly what we just read in Isaiah 42 that the Messiah was going to do. Isn't that awesome? The Antichrist, we're told in Scripture, is the one who teaches lawlessness and against the Torah. That's who works for Satan. <laughs> so... Oh, people are so deluded, aren't they? It's sad. Um, <clears throat> hello, guys. Round two. <clears throat> Round two, we're back. Let's continue. Now we're in Isaiah 43. So we read Isaiah 40, 41, and 42. Fantastic chapters. Let's go with Isaiah 43. But now thus says Yahweh, who created you, O Yahov. That's how you say Jacob. Let's practice that. Yahov. And he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Pause. Wait a minute. Where does the name Israel come from? When Yahov wrestled with Yahweh. Hello, hello, guys. When Yahov, this is round two. If you missed the first episode tonight, remember it's gonna be it's on the page. You go post watch that video later. It's really good. Um Okay, so <coughs> I think Jess is talking to the person up there that was being wicked. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Right, he says right here, I have called you by your name. When Yeshua wrestled with Jacob and struck him in the hit, he said, no longer shall you be called Jacob, Yaakov, but Israel. And that means to wrestle with God and overcome. Yahweh called you by your name. He called you Israel. What does it mean to wrestle with God and overcome? What does that mean? You know what it means? If you read the book of Hosea, it talks about where Yaakov, Jacob, wept and sought his favor. And why did Yeshua strike Jacob in his hip? Why was, his, why was he wrestling with him? Well, he was wrestling through his sinful behaviors. That's what I believe it's a symbol of. Jacob was wrestling with God. Jacob was wrestling with Yeshua. He had pride. He had willfulness, fleshly behaviors. And Yeshua was wrestling, like the word of God. You kind of wrestle with the word of God sometimes. But what Jacob did was the thing that will define you. Because every single one of us is going to fall and stumble and mess up. Every single one of us is going to sin. We're going to have to wrestle we're going to be wrestled with by God. Okay? We're going to be wrestled with by God. But the thing that will set apart you if you're Israel versus the people who don't make it, you are the ones who say, I will not let you go until you bless me. And what does that mean? Does that mean you arrogantly do the Joyce Myers, name it and claim it? Does that mean you arrogantly walk around and say, I deserve the rubies and the riches? No. What it means, it says, you say to Father, I could never have saved myself. I'm a wretched soul. I will not let go, even though I have failed. Because you told me you're my Savior. You told me in your stripes I am healed. You told me you'd be the God who saved me. So don't leave me here. Do not let me stay in my wretched sinfulness. Do not... Do not let me stay here. And then, sometimes we have a consequence and a reminder of our sin. The angel Yeshua struck Yaakov's hip. And from then on, Yaakov always walked with a limp. Jacob walked with a limp because his flesh and pride 
had caused him to wrestle with God. So when you don't let go of smoking or you don't let go of anger or unforgiveness or bitterness or drugs or pornography, you're wrestling with God. And he will strike you and punish you in some area usually if you don't let go of that sin. And he's wrestling with you. Come on, let it go. And you're like, no, let it go. No. He's like, this is a wrestling match, right? He will always win. But Jacob wept. It says Jacob wept and sought his favor. What it that shows is that Jacob eventually admitted his wrong, confessed his wrong, wept before Yahweh. That's in the book of Hosea. And he realized, okay, I messed up. I messed up. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But I'm not letting go. Okay, so I messed up. For me, it was like smoking and drinking. Okay, let's go through there. Okay, Lord, I get it. I get it. I messed up. But I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm holding on to you. You are my only hope. You are my savior. You are my salvation. You are the one who said you would hate me. Remember the Canaanite woman? She comes to Yeshua, heal my daughter, heal my daughter. And Yeshua says, well, you know, that's only for the children. And she says, but even the dogs get the scraps from the master's table. And he said, oh, woman, great is your faith. You see, he always wanted to heal her. He always wants to help you win. He wants to help you make it. But you have to push through. See, the essence of faith is working in you where you actually have to call forth God's promises and remind him of it. Not that he forgot, but he wants to see if you will stand on his promises and firmly believe what he said. Because if not, Satan will condemn you. If not, you will go the lawless way. If not, you're going to go the wrong way. Notice how he took Abraham up the mountain. Abraham knew murder was sinful, but he knew Yahweh told him, give me your son. Come on, take him up there. He pushed Abraham to his limits his only son. But Abraham's faith said, I know. What did he say to his servants when he let, went up the mountain? We will return. He didn't say I will return. He and Isaac went together and he said, we will return. He had faith. He knew God was going to provide a ram. He didn't know how. See, Jacob knew and confessed his sin. And he said, I know though you're my savior. You are my forgiveness. You are my savior. You are my God. I'm not letting go. Yep, I messed up. Please forgive me. So please, in the darkest hour, in your biggest trials, do not let go. When I first had the vision, I didn't even know that story. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the story, really. I was smoking like a fiend, drinking like a, you know, I could hold a 12-pack of beer, no problem. I was cussing like a trucker, probably dressed in like a floozy two-bit hole. And I kept seeing Yeshua come to me and turn away from me. I didn't even know what Zizia or at this time. This is back in 2000, 2001. And I would grab him by the garment and I would say, you're not leaving me here. I literally see this vision over and over and over and over. He would just come to me and I would grab his garments and say, and I would go with him. And when I came to Torah, when I finally broke and gave up my cigarettes and my drinking and my cussing and everything, started wearing clothes, <laughs> um, stopped coloring my hair, stopped wearing makeup other than barnyard makeup, right? Um, he said, Mel, your name is Achazel. And I said, what's that mean? He says, to grasp God. And then he showed me that vision. And he said, Mel, you're not letting go. You've grasped me. He goes, but also you understand me. He says, it's twofold. You didn't let go. Because see, I told God in my day, I knew I was sinning. I knew I was smoking. I knew I was doing bad things. But I kept, in those visions, I kept holding him. And I said, but you're not leaving me here. You're not leaving me here. And then he gave me a vision three days before I took my last cigarette, right in that time frame. And he came on a white horse and he picked me up and he put me on the back of his horse. And there were thousands of angels with him. And he saved me. And he gave me a dream that night. 
And he said, Monday, it will be gone. And Monday, December 6th, 2001, was the last cigarette I ever touched. <laughs> and you want to know what happened? I went outside, took a puff. My throat closed. I went into anaphylactic shock and I've had full anaphylaxia before from shellfish, so I knew what it was like. And I panicked and I freaked out and I was like, because all day I wouldn't smoke because I knew that dream. It said, Monday it'll be gone. And my throat closed. And so then I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, I am punishing you, but I am going to bless you in the wilderness. And I said, how long, Father? And he said, 40 days. And do you know for 40 days exactly, all I could eat <laughs> was unleavened tortillas with sugar-free jelly. That's all. That's all I could eat. That's the only thing he allowed me to eat for 40 days, the bread of affliction. I didn't know any of this stuff at the time. During those 40 days is when he kept telling me, you're a Levite, and he would touch my head. He goes, you're sealed. You're a Levite. You're mine. And I'm like, what, is he, what, what do you mean? Because <laughs> see, my family's Jewish. They were Levites, but I didn't understand anything. I lived in a very happy cloud nine bubble. I didn't know what anything was. My, my dad was like, they always talked about us being Jewish. And I'm like, I didn't know. My grandma didn't talk about it, but my dad said other people did. I don't know. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. And I didn't let go. And when he told me my name, he said, Achazel, to grasp God. And I want all of you to know that. I realized that I was dark yet lovely. The Song of Songs, remember? And I said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But I never was and I never will be. You're my Savior. Save me. You're my Savior. Save me. That was literally what I told him. Over and over and over. And he didn't leave me. And he saved me. And then he said, after the 40 days, so I had 40 days where all I could eat was those weird tortilla things. A-C-H-A-Z-E-L, like, well, kind of, or A-K-H-A-Z-E-L, um, Achazel. And then, um, um, and then, sorry guys, oh yeah, okay. Um, and then I had, okay, so I did 40 days. <laughs> And he got rid of all the smoking and all the yucky stuff. And then he told me my house was full of idols. So I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are you t what's going on? I thought I was going crazy. And then two weeks later, he said, 13 days, no food. And it ended, my fast ended on a Friday night at sunset. And I was like, oh, I don't understand what's happening to me. <laughs> but what's Friday night at sunset? Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. If you missed the first three chapters, we did a live earlier. I had to go take care of splitting the cows apart for milking in the morning, and we're back. What is Friday night at sunset? Shabbat! <laughs> and for just so you know, during this whole entire phase of this process of God humbling me, I had been saying for that whole entire year, actually, I would kneel every day at my stairs because he kept saying, you're following man, not me. You're following man, not me. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then he says, you're breaking my Sabbath. I'm like... So on Sunday, I wouldn't go to stores. I would rest. I would try really hard not to break the Sabbath. I thought that was the Sabbath, right? Oh, he saved me because I didn't let go. And he saves me every time continuously because I don't let go. And when I go through hard times, I call on his name because I want to be Israel. So, sorry, that was a long story, but I think you guys need to understand that concept. If you can't understand that concept, you might not make it <laughs> because you have to understand that you will not be perfect, that you will not do everything correct. You are going to go through the valleys. You are going to be refined and you are going to fall. It's in those times where your wickedness is revealed that you must cling to him, confess it as sin, cry out to him and say, you're my savior. Save me now. I will not let go. I will not turn away in shame. I'm not running the other way. I'm not giving up on you. I confess it. I weep and I seek your favor. Oh, heaven, Carlton, praise Yahweh for bringing you back. It's not too late. Um, exactly. So don't get condemned 
Don't get condemned. I literally will feel the spirit rise up in me. I'm like, you know what? Okay, I messed up. Said something incorrectly, spoke too this much, or had a depressed thought. Nope, you know what? I'm not done. I said, not today, Satan. God's not done with me because I've got another breath. So I look up at Yahweh and I say, okay, guy, let's go. Take me. Make me yours. Refine me, purify me, discipline me, whatever you need. But Lord, you don't lose me. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be Israel. You're going to have to wrestle with God and overcome. Israel means to wrestle with God and overcome. You're going to have a lot of wrestlings. Don't give up. Okay. Sorry. But I had to share that part there. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim. <sighs> Where am I at? Okay. Verse 2. Boy, we got a long ways. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Yahweh is one who named us Israel. He wants us to be overcomers. You are mine, he says. So next time you ever feel a temptation to sin, you're like, nope, I belong to Yahweh. My Yahweh is a holy God. I ain't giving in to that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. When you pass through the waters, per Exodus, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, second Exodus, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. We're about to go through the refiner's fire. We're about to go through the furnace. We are about to go through the baptism of fire. We won't be burned if we cling to him. We won't be burned. We won't be burned <laughs> if we are Israel. Please be Israel. Wrestle with God and overcome. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Please take a minute. If you have the inner linear with you there, I want to show you something here. <laughs> that word there, um, in, in Hebrew, it's reading it, um, Yisrael Moshiecha Natati Chafri Mitzrayim. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that. Yeah. Right, okay. So here, it is saying, Moshiecha. Moshiecha, I'm your savior. Um, that root word there is um, Yasha which is salvation. So Yeshua, Yehoshua, that means Yahweh's salvation. So I want you to get familiar with going to the Hebrew there and looking at it. He's literally saying, I am your savior. I'm, and he uses the same root word as what Yeshua's name was on earth. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Lo irach, fear not, lo irach, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. Who lives in the western lands? That's us. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name whom I have created for my glory. We are created for his glory. We are not created so we look good or we have kingdoms or we have ministries. No, 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 no. We are created for his glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him, says Yahweh. Right, Yahweh saying this. Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it's truth. You, you, Israel, are my witnesses, says Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Yahweh made you to be his witness, to be his servant. Remember the last chapter? It said, you, I made you, you're my servant. You're his witnesses. God didn't make you to be a carpenter, a banker, a stockbroker. He made you to know him. 
Yahweh created you, put you here on this earth to know him, to be his witness, to be his servant. You have a purpose. Your purpose is not found on a, on a personality test. He'll give you a job that pays and makes your, your, your way while you're here on earth. But your purpose, your purpose is not what the stupid ASVAB tells you, not what the Myers-Briggs tells you. Your purpose is to serve Yahweh, to be his witnesses, and to know and believe him. That sums up your life. That's why you were created. If you want to know your purpose, that's it. And until you fall in love with your Savior, you are going to be depressed. Until you fall in love with him and realize how much he loves you. Cue, please go listen to the Song of Songs YouTube video I put out the other day. When you know how much you matter to him, he's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. Please do not be a lazy person who doesn't work. But my point is, you're not here to chase riches of the world. You're here to chase him. You're here. He is your treasure. He is your treasure. He is our treasure. That's why we're here. Is that not beautiful? Can you see? I can barely see him just about crying this whole time. This is so beautiful. Before me, there was no God, he says, and nor shall there be after me. I, even I am Yahweh. And besides me, there's no savior. I have declared and saved. I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says Yahweh, that I am God, that I am Elohim. We are to be witnessing to the whole world that Yahweh Elohim, the one who came to teach the Torah, even to the Gentiles, Isaiah 42 says, that he is God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there's no other who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reverse it. Thus says Yahweh, your redeemer, the redeemer, he bought us to redeem something means to buy it, to pay for it through the blood of Yeshua, his son, the Holy one of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. See, he's going to destroy the Babylonian religious system. All of modern Christianity is based on Babylonian mythology. He brought, he's bringing it down, crumbling it. You are seeing through the structures of the yucky lies so that you could come out. He's going to send to Babylon and bring them down as fugitives. The Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. Yes, there was Babylon that actually did um, captive, take captive Judah as well. Remember that, just the southern kingdom. I am Yahweh, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Better not be voting for presidents of America. If we have a king, we have a king. We have been exiled to a foreign land. America is not our homeland. We have a king. Our king is Yeshua, who reigns in the name of his father, Yahweh. And they are both deity and God. Thus says Yahweh, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They shall be quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen, this people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. You have been given water right now in the wilderness of America and that you may declare Yahweh's praise. Speak boldly. But here's Yahweh. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob. Think about all the people like who are not really calling upon him. And you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings. Do not start sacrificing sheep in your backyard. Leviticus 17 says only do it at the temple. Deuteronomy 16.5 says don't do like Passover sacrifice or anything in your own gates. Don't take this out of context. This was talking about when they still had the temple. And we will have a temple, but he's, he's making a point here. You're not even giving anything to me. Nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. See, the sacrifices aren't burdens. They're honoring gifts to Yahweh. You're basically having dinner with daddy. 
I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me, satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. And he's like, but I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Like, look, I'm overlooking your sins so that I can have you. I love you. Why then would we trample his blood and sin on purpose? Does that not seem ludicrous? He's like, look, I'm going to blot out your transgressions. You keep, you keep like only burdening me with your sins, but I'm going to forgive you. And I will not remember your sins. Now, if this doesn't humble you, then you don't know God. If you don't feel that breaking of your heart where you're like, Ugh, I'm so sorry, Daddy. I'm so sorry, Daddy. Then you don't know him. And I would suggest hitting your knees and crying out. And if you think you can just go have a ham sandwich and give him the birdie and flip it in his face, or you think you can break the Sabbath, and he literally just says, I'm burdened by your sins, I'm wearied by them, but I'm going to forgive you. Don't break his heart. He says in Ezekiel that we crushed his heart. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. For your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary, and I will give Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. See, he's a just God, and he had to give us over to the curse because of our sin. But he already promised he's going to forgive us. And that forgiveness requires repentance. The word repentance is teshuva. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good chapter, huh? That's a heavy hitter. Any questions on that, guys? Ashkenazi Jewish. My cousin DNA says she is 1% cousin. So am I Jewish? Um, you might be. Many people, um, the, the scattered tribes of Israel lost their identity according to Hosea. Says they would have gray hair and not know they, they're, they're the ancient peoples. Um, my family, our last name literally is priest, Kohan. We didn't have to guess. If you look at the family history, it became Canels, but it was Kohan, which means Kohan of God. And when they came to America to disguise their Jewish heritage. So sometimes the, those DNA tests are a little, we don't know. But I can almost guarantee you, if you're listening right now and wakening up to the Torah, the prophecy was to the seed of Abraham and any Gentiles that wanted to cling to them. But primarily, it was to, to the children of Israel. So they were going to awake, awaken during this time, right before the Messiah returns, as Ezekiel 36 and 37 say. You need more tissues? Oh, Tammy, we should definitely not vote. In, I haven't voted for 20, almost 23 years. The father told me, he says, Mel, don't you dare set a king over you that I didn't approve of. And he says, the Bible says to set a king over you whom I've chosen. He said, you're in a foreign land. I've scattered you. I will take care of you, but you're not part of this system. That was a big one for me because I'm from a very conservative Republican family. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he told, he told me not to vote. He told my family not to vote. We do not stand and rise for the flag. My allegiance is not to the flag of America. My allegiance is to Yahweh. He says, don't you dare pledge allegiance to this flag, Mel. This country is going to turn against my people. So it's very awkward during all those little times when people stand and salute the flag. And Yahweh's told me no, but I will always fear my God first. Um, okay. You guys want to keep going? Want one more chapter? Want one more chapter? Because I think I can make it one more. Um, okay. I'm really... Um, do you, can you tell how stuffy I got? Lit, right? I ran outside to do chores. I was fine. And then I got stuffy because I did chores. Because Isn't that crazy? Okay. One more. Let's go. Yeshayahu 44. Okay. Yet here... Okay. So here's this whole thing going back and forth with Yahweh. He says, I'm going to send the Savior, the Messiah. He's going to teach the Gentiles the law. I'm going to redeem you. And the Yahweh keeps pleading with him. Like, look, you keep messing up, but I love you. I'm going to forgive you. We're reading from the NKJV, Lindsay. Okay. How does he pick a ruler without voting? He does it. Yahweh's in charge. See, the people who are of this nation, we're not, like, this nation is not our home. We're Israelites. We're waiting to go home to Israel. Ezekiel 47. That one's a good one for you to read. Um, we are not to be a part of this. And Father even told me, he says, Mel, 
<laughs> he goes, you like, because I firmly believe that Trump could be the Antichrist very strongly. And what he told me when Obama was running, he says, I'm putting Obama in as a curse to this country and don't you dare fight against me. Now, granted, I had not already voted already for a long time before that, but he wanted me to send that message to other people. He told me to tell them. He said, if you fight against what I did, because I'm putting Obama in specifically to judge this country, he goes, then you're fighting me. Because the Bible says he picks the rulers. He establishes and ordains it. And what you see is a lot of people trying to fight. And people start worshiping Trump, the most disgusting, vile man that's ever been. Like, I can't even believe Christians are... What Father told me is, he goes, I gave these Christians up to their base minds. They're literally, because of money and fiscal policy, he says they're literally debasing, going so low that they're supporting one of the most wicked and ungodly men ever and pretending he's a Christian. Ooh, he goes, I'm giving them over. He goes, I'm judging them left and right. I'm letting them get caught in their vileness. So I'm waiting for my King Yeshua. I don't have to vote. I have a king coming back. I have a king of kings. Yep. Melech Melachim. Adon Adonai. Adonim. Okay. Isaiah 44. Yeah, Trump is like a Saul. You got it. Um, yeah, and Obama is. Ooh. Yahweh puts him in power. We are to watch our tongue to be reverent, but they are definitely wicked. Like the Bible says, this is a bad king. He did evil. All these kings are doing evil in the sight of Yahweh. We can say that. Okay. Okay. I've always look at who his spiritual advisor is. Um, in Hannah, I don't even know, but I know it used to be Billy Graham, who was also a very dark man. Um, yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Does it feel good that God chose you? Does it feel good that he loves you? Doesn't that make you want to obey him? Thus says Yahweh who made you and formed you from the womb who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants. That's you. That's who he's talking about. The spirit of God right now in Joel chapter two is being poured out on you, the descendants of Abraham. And my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the watercourses. One will say, I'm Yahweh's. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. That is you, that is you, that is you. That is the people around you coming to Torah for the last 30 years. Another will write with his hand, Yahweh, he's going to write right on there, I'm Yahweh, and name himself by the name of Israel. All of you have begun to name yourself by the name of Israel. Some of you in the last six months, some of you in the last five years, some of you in the last like 23 years like me, some of you 30 years. Is this not exactly beautiful and prophetic? This is you, the spirit being poured out. You're springing up like grass all around the world. God's children are arising and you're calling yourself by the name of Jacob, by the name of Israel. Hmm, it's beautiful. I don't care the color of your skin. It doesn't matter. God doesn't care. God does not care. The seed of Abraham went to every single tribe, every single nation on earth. In fact, let's pause for a minute. Let me tell you a story. In the book of John, Yeshua tells the disciples to cast out their nets one more time. And they cast in their net to the right side, the side of mercy. And 153 fish were caught. It is not an arbitrary number. God didn't have to say or lead the writer to say how many fish were caught. But he did, and it means something. At that time in history, there were 153 Gentile nations in the earth. Ephraim in Genesis chapter 48, said they were going to multiply like the fish and become the Gentiles, the fullness of the Gentiles, the Melah Hagoyim. So when the disciples cast in the net one more time, they brought up 153 fish. Yahweh was showing that he was going to catch back the Ephraimites, the children, the Christians. Because remember, the fish symbol, the reason the fish symbol was used was not because of Dagon. It literally was because in the Hebrew language, the Gentile nations, the, the Ephraimites are called the fish, Hadagim, in verse 16 of 48. Got to read the Hebrew, guys. Take our Hebrew classes. They're free. You're going to learn this. 
Oh, is that not beautiful? Yahweh is saving us. See, that was the first Feast of Pentecost was the first, the beginning of the 10 Northern tribes coming back. If you don't believe me, let's look at Peter's address. Peter says, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Doesn't say to the Gentiles. And it's in the New Testament. And then we see James say to those of the dispersion. And they might, I might have that mixed up as they're talking. One, one says one, one says the other. They knew. <laughs> they knew that the Gentiles they were calling back was part of the prophecy. Remember we, well, we're going to read it. Yeshua's prophecy was he was going to teach the Gentiles the Torah, but also that he was going to raise up the dispersed of Israel. Is this not beautiful? Is it, the Hebrew classes, Catherine, I actually looked at a comment. I usually don't do that till the end of a chapter. And the Hebrew classes are on YouTube. I'm starting to go through them again so you can catch up. I did a chapters one through three review on Sunday night. We're going to switch them to Monday nights from now on. Um, but I did a chapters one through three review. It is uploaded so when you have the book, it is for you to pause and go through and read it with me and take as long as you need on those three chapters. They're the building blocks of the Hebrew language and go through it and through it and through it. The book is called, uh, yeah, reach out to me if you need the book or somebody can link that. Is Angela on tonight? I don't see Angela. Maybe Danielle has that link to the book. Because Carissa, or I mean, Cassandra, you might have the link to the book as well that you could post there. Um... The book is the first Hebrew primer, third edition. I don't have it down here. Um, oh, Yahweh is so beautiful. He's opened the eyes. We just read about it. He's just opening the eyes of the blind. It's beautiful. Okay, Isaiah 44. Ready to keep going? I'm sorry, I'm freezing here. I'm sorry, Bonnie. I love you, Bonnie. And it'll, Yahweh, just please help. Sorry, guys. I have like, I already have stuffy nose because we're not doing chores. This little thing now makes it really stuffy. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Oh, awesome. Danielle got that. Um, awesome, Darlene. Perfect. Um, oh, awesome. Okay, perfect. Cassandra got the book. Isaiah 44. Let's keep going. Um, okay, Katie. Yahweh bless you. We're going to go through just one more chapter. You can catch up tomorrow if you want. Yahweh bless you. Hi, Tavenda. One more chapter, Isaiah 44. If you missed, this is the second half of tonight. We had a little interlude of going to catching the milk cow. And then I came back. So, remember to listen to the first three chapters. They were beautiful. Isaiah 40, 41, and 42. Now we're on 43, and this is 44. Yet here now. Wait a minute. Did I just read that? I'm in verse. I'm in verse 6. Thus says Yahweh, the king of Thus says Yahweh, the king of Israel, the king of Israel, the king of Israel. We have a king. We have a king. And his redeemer, Yahweh Sevaot, Lord of hosts. It actually means Yahweh of armies, like the head of the armies. I am first and I am last. Besides me, there is no Elohim. And who can proclaim as I do? Let him declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come. Let them show these to them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Ted Pierce has a beautiful song about this. Go find his song. Those who make an image, all of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They're their own witnesses. See, our, we are a witness to God that he's real, and he's the only God. Those idols are their own witnesses that they're not God. They had to be made by the maker. People like in a flood carrying their own little wooden gods, like they have to save the God that was supposed to save them. Like, but our God saves us. Um, and their precious thing. okay, those who make an image, all of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who, who would form a god? Um, who would form a god or mold an image that profits him nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed. In the workmen, they are mere men. Let them all gather, be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. The blacksmith with the tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with hammers, and works it with the strength of his arms. Even so, he's hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. So he's like he just is furiously making this idol. 
The craftsman stretches out his rule. He marks out one, one out with a chalk. He fashions it with a plane. He marks it out with a compass. It makes it like a figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man that it remain in his house. He cuts down cedars and the oak. He secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and the rain nourishes it. Then it shall be for a man to burn, for he will take some of it and warm himself. So he cuts down this tree. Some of it he burns for himself and some of it he makes an idol like his God. He burns half of it in the fire. With this half he eats meat. He roasts a roast and is satisfied. He even warms himself and says, ah, I'm warm. I've seen the fire. And the rest of it he makes into a God, his carved image. He falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, deliver me for you are my God. They do not know nor understand for he has shut their eyes so they cannot see in their hearts so they cannot understand. And no one considers in his heart nor is there knowledge or nor understanding to say, I have burned half of it in the fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. He's like, they're clueless. They can't even just tell that they just roasted half of it in the fire for their food. Or they used part of it for the fire, for their food. And, and the other part, they're worshiping. Like, bruh, bruh. And shall I make the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob, and Israel, for you are my servant. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out, like a thick cloud, your transgressions, and like a cloud, your sins. Nobody replaced Israel. God chose to forgive us. He chose to blot out our transgressions. I, and, okay, but, Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for Yahweh has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest and every tree in it. For Yahweh has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus says Yahweh, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am Yahweh, who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the sign of the babblers. Notice there was no preacher of rapture yesterday, the babblers who were saying that. There's not going to ever be a preacher of rapture. Okay, he's going to frustrate those signs. Okay, so he frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad because they're trying to like conjure up their spells, but he's going to confound them who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness who confirms the word of his servant so if he sends you to speak something he will confirm his word and performs the counsel of his messengers because he gave the word who says to jerusalem you shall be inhabited to the cities of judah you shall be built and i will raise up her waste places who says to the deep be dry and I will dry up your rivers. Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. Kiddos, we are about to have a third temple. We are about to have a spiritual Cyrus arise. I don't know who it is, but God is going to move some man and some agreement to build this third temple. It says in Ezekiel 45 that Yeshua will cleanse the temple, that temple, and he will use it for the glory of God and the offerings and sacrifices and services of Yahweh. Because we were never saved by the sacrifices or offerings. We were saved by the blood of Yeshua and every single thing in the Torah points to the Messiah. It teaches us about who he is. It teaches us how to love Yahweh, the Father. It teaches us how to love each other. It teaches us how God, um, what Yeshua is going to do for us, how this, how, what our sin cost us. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Hi. I didn't even see you on here, Karen. Hi. Yep. Yes, Heaven Carlton. There's a picture. They've built it over on the Mount of Olives, right? For, which is interesting, right? Where that's from where Yeshua ascended. That's where he will return after the tribulation. Isn't that interesting? Some people think, are we just going to go through the tribulation and have an altar? I don't think so. I think there's going to be a temple. People are speculating that it'll take about four months to build based on projections of the Temple Institute or other things that people have seen. 
So four months isn't that long. All we got to have is a peace treaty to get it done. We got to get that Dome of the Rock, the um, Al-Aqsa Mosque off there and build it. Oh, I love you all so much. I love you, Karen. You're, Karen has, by the way, Karen has a lot of good posts that um, put God first, Barney. Um, I like, she does a lot of like really deep writing ones. I really love them. Danielle has been doing some reels. I haven't got to watch them. I'm sorry, Danielle. Morgan's been doing a few wonderful reels. Um, I saw... Uh, Kimberly, was it you doing some reels? Thank you. Praise Yahweh. Um, Faith was doing some. Praise Yahweh. You guys, get out there and share the word. Share, 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 share. You guys, like, I am not so certain that we're not just entering the last seven years. I'm just going to say, just going to say, there's so many prophecies God's given me to, for 20-some years. This could definitely be the last seven. This could be the, we're entering the last week of Israel. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Is the new altar is by the west wall. Um, it's over by the Mount of Olives. So I don't know. I don't know if that's by the west wall. Yeah, I'll praise to Yavi. Um, okay, any questions before we get off? Because we came back on and did part two of tonight, and I'm glad we did. I'm, but I'm now I'm really tired. Uh, and I got really stuffy from being outside. <laughs> Doing the chores again. Um, I'm so very thankful. Oh, I'm so very thankful for all this family. Okay, guys, remember Thursday night's Instagram. We have to go over there because there's been a beautiful, some beautiful souls over there that have been touched, um, that have started to come. Um, and then Friday night Zoom, and then Saturday we're gonna go back to 10 a.m. I, uh, it just does better for us to do the live at 10 a.m. on Facebook, and then I go to the fellowship here and we teach there. It's just so much easier. Um, I love you all. Wait, you're doing reels? Are we friends on Facebook? I need to be with you. Okay, Alicia, I've... Oh, I don't know who she's talking to. Okay, so Alicia is talking to... I don't know who. But... um. Oh, Kimberly, maybe. I love you, Bree. Uh, I love you all. You guys are so wonderful. Any questions before we go out? Prayers for everybody who needs it. Father, please help Tristan's eyes. Please help... Oh, Bonnie, with her health issues, please help every single person with her health, is health issues. What are your thoughts on the NMV? Um, honestly, I've never read that one, so I can't, I can't speak. I hate the David Stern's New Jewish Bible one. I hate that translation. It's so wrong on some of them. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, Kimberly, I know. I'd rather just photograph my chickens and my cows as well. Um, yay for Saturday. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, thank you, guys. Uh, oh, you were talking to Danielle. Great. I'm so glad I've been aligned with you. Oh, well, praise Yahweh. You know, so here's the interesting thing, Mark. I used to be so sad. My, my husband had a vasectomy right after, one month after I had my son because he got afraid. There were some situations I won't discuss. But anyway, he thought that he was saving my life perhaps for... Sometimes we're a little dramatic in our family. Jews are very dramatic if you've read the Bible. We tear our clothes and stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, so I used to get so sad. But the father would always tell me, Mel, you have me. And you're going to have more children than those with children. And I have one child. So, I mean, I don't mean it like that. But I love kids. I love kids. I would have had a, I would have had like 20 babies. I loved being pregnant. I loved the whole process. I would have had a million. But Yahweh always told me, Isaiah 54, he says, Mel, you're mine. And you're going to be the mother of my children. And so for years, I've always taught Torah. We've taught Torah for 20 some years. But like you guys are like exploded. So now I have lots of babies, lots of babies at once. And I really feel that it's just Yahweh speaking through me. He's my husband. He's the head. And he is directing us to get you. You're his child. Like you're the one he loves. And so I'm just here to wash the feet of his servants and to feed his babies. There was a dream given two weeks ago to a man who doesn't understand what he's seeing, but I totally knew the nursery is filled with babies and there's only a few people feeding them and they're starving. So I'm going to keep feeding you. Please listen to the podcast. Please listen to the YouTube videos. If you have questions, let me know. We've, we've been going through these live videos. We've gone through almost, we've gone through so many of the New Testament letters to show how they validate Torah. Those are a lot on the YouTube videos. Sometimes I make special segments. I try to just read through the scriptures with you because 
What I don't like to do is what a lot of people do is they parse scripture apart. I mean, I can do that. I can pull things together for you. But isn't it better when you read through it so that you know what it says and you can see I didn't take a scripture out of context or a verse out of context that you can see that this was the premise. Using exegesis, this is what it was referring to. This is to whom it was writing and this is the foundation of what it means. I, I love to do that with you guys because that gives you the best tool so that you don't have to feel like anybody's pulling things together from an abstract way. So anyway, I love you. Thank you for your encouragement. Um, but I, that this is the time, my whole long shebang story when that was, this is what I am. I'm like your mom, Alyssa. Like I'm here to feed you. That's my job. No pay. <laughs> Yahweh pays me in his love and he'll take care of me. You guys need to then raise up and feed those in your jurisdiction, who you see, pull the body together, make us one. May we never de divide. We don't start named organizations. We don't divide from each other. We keep everything going right up to the king. That's why I don't take a name group. We've been, people have asked us for years to lead their organizations, to do this, that. I mean, for, I'm not joking. Since 2002, they've asked us, be the pastors of our groups, be the Messianic. Nope. We are, quote, pastors, but we won't take a name. We won't take a title. We won't take money. We won't, like, we don't start a named group. God already named us. What did he tell us tonight? He said, I named you Israel. <laughs> I named you Israel. The minute I call myself something else than Israel, then I've already started a faction and divided it off in a way that makes somebody else the leader. But our leader is Yeshua, <laughs> right? Like our leader is Yeshua. So don't start a group without me. I'm not going to start a group without you. The body's all welcome together. We don't divide from each other. We don't gossip about each other. We don't put each other down. We build each other up if one of us has fallen behind. Does that make sense, guys? We are a body, and we're all supposed to be working for the king. We're not supposed to be like, oh, I'm going to go start the Melissa Institute or the Melissa Ministry. No, I'm I'm Israel. I'm working for the king, <laughs> and that's what you guys need to do. Don't say, I'm going to start my own named organization, the Sheila Tucker Institute of Fantastical Hippie Torah Lovers. I don't know. <laughs> my point is, like, I'm just right. No, we help each other. We help each other. Um, Everything he says may reveal to me this. Oh, that's awesome. Praise Yahweh, Steph. Beautiful, beautiful. Check out the podcast. Check out the YouTube videos. Join us Thursday on Instagram. That's God's Little Hummingbird on Instagram. Same time. Um, and then Zoom on Friday. And I may have to push it back next week, a half hour. Because of what the cows did tonight. Oh, Liberty, praise Yahweh. Can't wait till Friday. The Friday night one Paris is great. Now, we were a little chattier this week so we didn't get much bible study but it's good because it's still biblical because everything's talking and i felt that you guys need connection um you must be a jew i'm pretty sure you are i love the way they translate the old they actually call it oh that's awesome that's awesome dorothy okay thank you for the prayers pastors oh awesome and jenna we still need to talk i kind of laid back because i knew you were Oh, like we were going to talk that day and then I got busy and then you were dealing with the funeral and everything. So reach out to me. Um, I do have time tomorrow. I do have a few slots available tomorrow to talk. So Lorenzo, if you want to talk tomorrow and Jenna, we can set up a time to do that in the afternoon. Um, please pray for my hand. Oh, Yahweh Elohim, please, please, please help Christina's hand. Father, reach down and take away the pain and that usually that's a really deep, blistering burn with that rope burn father god would you please give her comfort right now and heal it for your glory in the name of yeshua we ask amen christina i am so so sorry that um when i had a restaurant and i have scars because i was a chef um in in my bakery in my restaurant man i have so many scars and then i have rope burns what i always do because this is therapia not pharmacia i keep cold aloe to put it on. Remember how the good Samaritan dressed the wound with wine to take the, the but hope is a lot different than pharmacia. Just the aloe, all it does is soothes and pulls that heat out. And, and of course, you know, you're icing it and whatnot. Um, I'm so sorry. Oh, you know what? Yeah, um, you know, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Y-N-O-H-T-N-A. I am so sorry that I am illiterate in that name. Yenothna, Yenothna, I apologize. I studied linguistics. I was a college professor of English. I should know, but I don't know how to say it, so I'm sorry. I'm messing it up. Um, 
you're going to be hated. It's the first time you'll ever be persecuted in your life. It's the first time you're actually walking the road of Messiah. And he was hated. He was persecuted. That's how you know you're on the right path. Yeah, we bless you. Oh, well, Cassandra, you know what I what I like about the way that Yahweh leads me to teach it? Because I've done other studies too, is that I'm pushing, I'm teaching you how to just read through the scripture and see what's there, right? Like I'm not trying to be some profound person who gets money from you and I have secret knowledge. No, I want to unfold the knowledge for you to discover. That's what a true teacher should do. Remember we read that in Isaiah a couple weeks, couple days, well, a couple weeks ago. It was that a true teacher should be behind you pushing you to get close to God. That's your teachers, they're behind you. Because if I show you what to do, then you can do it. But if I pretend to have all this way to hook the scriptures together, no, that's not fair to you. The way you hook scriptures together is by going through the Bible book by book so it becomes internalized in you so that you then know how to do that. God is so good. Um, <laughs> you know what, Liberty? I had to be a real midwife once, and I don't like that. I don't like delivering babies for real. <laughs> now, my cows, the goats, baby chicks hatching, totally fine. That human part of it, I was, I don't, like I told father, I said, I don't think I was meant to be a midwife, but I had to be once because there was a snowstorm and somebody was having a baby and the husband wouldn't help. Yep. <laughs> Not my favorite thing. Not my favorite thing. <laughs> Context is everything. You're right, Jill. Um, Thank you, Alicia. You're amazing, Alicia. I'm always praying for you too, sweetie. I love you so much. Thank you, guys. And thank you for helping everybody. Thank you for um, even explain who's talking to you. Oh, that's awesome, Dorothy. I, you know, and I don't know. I maybe would check it. I really like the NKJV. Um, I know sometimes, Paris. Thank you, Paris. Some people, like my husband, hate when I do that. Um, could you all keep him in prayer? just that that light would overcome him. I'm not going to say specifics, but would you just pray that Yahweh would make him be the man he's supposed to be because he is so anointed and sometimes it gets buried. Would you just pray that? Okay. Ooh, Ever Ann. Sorry, Father God, would you please touch Ever Ann's back, Lord, please for your glory, release and healing to her. Again, with anybody, Lord, show them the root cause, whether the hand, the rope burner, anything, Father, show us in the name of Yeshua, amen. Um, okay. Yeah, Jess, thank you. Um, yeah, and so you guys remember, things happen for a reason. Like, so the other day, <laughs> when my cow hit me, my cows usually symbolize people that I'm mentoring or teaching. My cow hit me on the head accidentally, and it hit me on the brow. And I said, Lord, why the brow? And Yavi said, because they're hitting you on the sweat of your brow where you've been working so hard and it's going to hurt you. <laughs> so I was a little bruised. My feelings, I guess not the hurt, but just it brought up a past hurt from mine from somebody else. This all had symbolism and Yahweh walked me through it and told me what it meant. And the person who did it, did it accidentally and it triggered a past wound of mine I've been betrayed a lot of times because <laughs> Yahweh told me that was going to be my path and until I could learn to just love and let go and not care, I was going to keep going through the little things. Anyway, so I think I've gotten past it, but I had a, a moment of panic the other day thinking that somebody was trying to... Anyway, they hit me on the sweat of my brow and then I got... There were some things I had to work through. So... Please always take it to God in prayer because he's so good. I'm not happy I look like this. But every day I said, thank you, Yave. Thank you, Yave. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me see what I need to go through. Thank you for helping me to see the areas where I still have hurts in my heart. Thank you for helping me to heal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, this is like sucks. I go to the gym and the guys are all like looking at me. Somebody goes, you look tough. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, 110 pounds, five foot eight. If you know what that looks like, that's like a string bean. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't look tough. I don't look tough. I don't look tough. I don't, I don't think a baby would think I'm tough. <laughs> like, I kind of am, have to be tough because farmers, but my point is I don't look tough. It was just funny. 
LOL the pinky toe group. Who said that? I missed it. That's cute. It's all kumbaya here. Ooh, Paris. Okay, Father God, please help Paris's family. <sighs> Take that sickness away. Please, Father, release healing into their bodies for your glory. In your mercy, in the name of Yeshua, amen. Question, if someone is lukewarm, are they not saved? So, Christina, it's not for me to judge. I cannot tell you the moment you are saved or not saved. All who call in the name of Yahweh are saved. Yeshua bears the name of Yahweh. Okay. Yeshua says he's going to vomit them out in Revelation. For me, I don't want to be vomit. Like, I haven't vomited. I don't vomit. I'm not a vomiter. Thank Father God. My husband and son, for the 27 years of our marriage, well, because we've been together 27 years now. Okay, they'll vomit, and I'll, I won't ever get the vomiting sickness, which, thank God, because I think that's so gross. But I can't imagine being little, wanting to be little chunks of vomit out of Yeshua's mouth. <laughs> and I can't think it's a good thing. He says we're going to be vomit if we're lukewarm. And so it doesn't say they're going to hell. The Bible says he who breaks the least of the commandments will be least in the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 5. I definitely, though, wouldn't take a chance with being vomit. <laughs> I'd rather not be vomit. And so let's be like that fire under your butt, like the fire on the altar of your heart. The other day I saw this huge vision of just like all of our hearts. Just I saw this opening. I think it was on Sabbath fellowship and it was just like, whew, I just saw this fire burning. We need to get that fire burning bright. Question. Okay. Um, strength in numbers. Okay. You guys are awesome. Thank you for everything tonight. Um, I truly needed this. Oh, awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dorothy. Father, would you please, please help Dorothy right now? Um, please move mightily to get her where you need her to be. Provide for them. Show them what to do. Please don't let them get evicted if it's your will. Whatever your will is, whatever you're moving in the situation, Lord, we want to be here. But please hold them and protect them through this and provide for all their needs in the name of Yeshua. Amen. I am so sorry. Oh. You know what, guys? I just want to encourage you. Um, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is. Okay, I'm missing the comments. But I do want to tell you something. Male body with a tic tac spirit, man with a six pack. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, okay, so you know sometimes you'll feel feel those little voices of Yahweh. Um, and today I was somewhere, and I opened my purse, and I never have cash in my purse, which <laughs> never, because that's just not how we do business anymore. And I heard the Lord say, "Well, this morning I was milking a cow." The cow, my cow. I have two cows that are milk cows, but only one's in milk right now. And he said, you're going to take this milk to this family. <laughs> I called the family, I said, do you, or they called me actually, and then I said, do you want this milk? And they said, yeah, we ran out today. Okay, great. Take them the milk. I'm just telling you, not because I'm anything good. Please don't think, I'm telling you to, to encourage you to listen to those voices. So, take the milk. And then I hear, I get there, and I'm, paying our wonderful tax bill of thievery to the government, U.S. government, because our quarterly taxes were due, are due like next week. So I'm writing out that check for our business. And I see in my purse, I had cash. And I heard the Lord say, go back in the house and give it to them. And they needed it. And so we as a body need to be there for each other. There's a lot of people hurting right now. There's a lot of people struggling, like Dorothy in her, in her area. I don't know where she lives or where she's at. But there's people who are going through some major difficulties. And we need to be there for each other. So if you feel a nudge of the Holy Spirit, like for example, um, one of you on here, I guess I won't say the name, I don't want to be careful. One of you reached out to me one day and said, I'm in need. The very next day, I had a brother reach out. He's on here too, if he still is. And he said, hey, where can I help with my money? Where can my funds go? <laughs> Do you know somebody in need? I was like, absolutely. This person just reached out. And so I don't like to put the big Facebook posts out there anymore because I just learned that it, caused, it was too much for me and it was just too much. And then, uh... But it was so amazing how they both reached out. And yeah, they put them together. And he blessed her immensely. And so when you feel that nudge, when some, you know, 
listen. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, Jenna, that went, you went through that also. So if any of you ever do, I won't take your money. I will not take your money. Um, I have a few for a few of you who couldn't, who the other person didn't have like the Venmo or whatever. So then I would do it and then send you a receipt and show you that it went right to the person. Um, but if you ever do have like set aside money, I call it set aside money rather than the tithe. Cause the tithe is technically of your animals and your, your, your grains and your, you know, your produce of your ground, but you can offer money as well. Like that's the 10th. So if you ever have stuff to set aside, message me privately and I will put you in contact with somebody who's reached out to me, okay? If you ever need that. Um, so if you ever, because sometimes it's hard to know where to put your money because we want to give to God of the first of everything, right? Always set aside 10% of our time, of our money, of everything God gives us. Um, at least 10%. And the Bible says actually open your hand wide to your brothers in need. So just remember that I do put you in connection with each other if people need help. I just won't, I won't take, the, I won't take money. And if I'm the only way that they can receive the payment, then I show you an actual receipt. I just send you the screenshot where it went to them. Um, okay, I just want to point that out and remind you, there's a lot of people hurting. Oh, if you have the ability to help others and you don't know where to give it, reach out. I'll put you in contact with somebody because there's plenty. I love you all. I'm going to go to bed. Well, probably I'm going to go and read some messages because I have a buttload of messages. Did you know that's an actual measurement? And, um, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Dorothy. That is so hard. Um, oh, goodness, Isabel, your five-year-old daughter is... Having terrible dreams. Oh my goodness, Father God, please rebuke the demons from that child and please help her and save her and protect her in the name of Yeshua. Yes, and just, I, okay, there's nothing magical in oil, but I do take oil and I anoint the child and the pillows in the room and I say, this is symbolic of the blood of Yeshua. You cannot come in this house, Satan. You cannot come in this house and blow the shofar. I, and I say, Father, hear my voice. I Because there's so many spiritual things that happen. We don't have to get weird, hokey pokey. There's nothing weird, magical. The, the It's just symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so anoint her, pray for her, lay on hands. And Yahweh, we ask as a group that you would rebuke those demons attacking that young child. Yahweh, get them away from her and take those demons away. Please protect her, show the mother if there's anything that's opening up the door to that so she can close that door and get those demons out. Please, Father, in the name of Yeshua, amen. Okay, night, night. Have a good evening, guys. I love you all so much. I will see you Thursday on Instagram at God's Little Hummingbird. Feel free to reach out if you have questions. Do not expect an immediate answer usually unless I happen to be right there. Um, oh, I love you all. Okay, I love you all. Yes, I am tired. And this thing, oh, so I had a massive, I forgot to tell you guys, I've had a massive concussion. Like, mm, it was a major concussion. I've had, I was an athlete, so I've had some concussions in life some serious ones. This one was pretty bad. <laughs> so if you noticed me struggling the last few days, it was real. <laughs> it was real. Okay. I love you all. Good night.